Now we get busy experimenting. I'm gonna put on gloves because always good to be cautious and careful. All paints are chemicals. I was gonna ask about that. I'm not a glove wearer, but well, I... it's a good idea. Yeah. You know, as so there's acute hazard and um, chronic hazard. All our stuff is chronic hazard, mm -hmm. which means if you're sloppy over time, you might get a buildup of chemicals and have a problem. So. You know, things like cadmiums and cobalts, first of all, once they're liquefied, you've taken that hazard way down. Mm -hmm. But if you're sloppy and you get in your skin, it's going into your bloodstream, you know, you don't want a bunch of heavy metal built right, up in right. your system. Yeah. yeah, so I, I always wear gloves. Okay. Um, and resins, you know, they're all um, between a one and a two. The industrial hazard rating goes from one to four. Mm -hmm. Everything we carry is mostly one, some are two, the urethanes are two. Always good to wear gloves. Okay. You know, just you don't want to get chemicals into your system. We get enough of it that we can't control. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's very true. we might as well try to do the best we can with when we can control the situation. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. Paint component system. You start with a container. Um, you grab a binder. I'm gonna grab some acrylic sixty here. So this is a high resin. I have to not cap this really What in there. does the number mean? The sixty. It's the resin content. Um. It's actually 59% resin content. It used to be 65 originally, um, and then they reduced it to 59, but that is the highest resin content available on the market, and that's all you need. It's like overkill. Uh, this is what they use in like stucco paint industrially. Um, so we use it as our base because you can do a lot with it. When it's high in resin, you can water it way down, you can thicken it way up, you can throw a bunch of texture in there, it can just hold it's a lot strong. of material. It's very strong. Okay, so to make paint, you start with your binder to, 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 uh, to determine your paint volume. Mm -hmm. So I want to make this much paint because the pigment itself, once it's been ground from the dry powder, here's a sample of some dry powder. Oh, is that an ultramarine there? That's an ultramarine, uh, yes, we can tell from the back. And again, just to recap, so here's what happens when the grinding process. This is indenthrone, which is like an indigo pigment. This is unground, and then once it's ground, look how radically different that is. Does the shininess also come out when it's ground? No, the shininess has to do with the binder we oh, used. Okay, and so okay. here we're using the urethane. So you see that self-leveling. There's no real brush stroke. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's very lovely. Uh, well, I will say, actually, when you're using a dry pigment, yes, the dry pigment um, is very absorbent. It acts, ad, acts as sort of a matting agent. Okay. So, and that's one process that you can do if you want like an ultra matte paint that is opaque you can use dry pigment for that particular process. Okay. So yeah, All that's right. a whole separate thing. We'll probably do a separate video about that at, at some point. Different, pro different, Dif process, totally different, different thing. Reason, yeah. Totally different thing, yeah. Okay, so with the pigment dispersion, mm -hmm. it's been ground down to its finest grind, which mm -hmm. is called a Hegman 8. Um, and that means those pigment particles have all been separated from each other and they have become as efficient as they can possibly be. So now this has become super strong. It's much stronger than it was in its dry form. Mm -hmm. And depending on what the property of that pigment is, it's going to be more transparent if that's what it's supposed to be. Um, I mean, if it's an opaque pigment, it's just going to stay opaque, but okay, you get the idea. So yeah. tap, shake. We keep these pure, we don't put any filler in there because we like to keep it pure, but what that means is you might get some settling of the pigment contents. Okay. So it's always good to give it a tap, give it a shake, always shake well. Is the dispersion just like water in it or what? what is okay, the so the dispersion, they all have different formulas depending on the pigment, they all have different requirements. Yeah. But basically, um, it's pigment, dispersed water, which is a surfactant, that's also something we sell separately as an additive for okay. people if they want to um, make their own kind of crude dispersion, um, which we have to call it crude because unless you have the proper equipment, right. it's going to be crude. Um, and then a little propylene glycol, which is a drying time retarder and, and water. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And all in different formulas and, you know, it's all proprietary, yeah, they're all but different. That's, they all have yeah. different requirements. Yeah. So once you give it a shake, you just give it a little squirt. All pigments have different um, strengths by mm -hmm. nature. Tinting strength is another pigment property. Uh, this happens to be a very, very strong one. Napthal Vermilion is also very opaque. 
so I forgot to get brushes ready. I'm terrible brushes here, just the worst. Now, should you actually, this is another good time for a question. Mm -hmm. Should you just have separate mixing brushes or does it make your brushes kind of funky to do this mixing it's at personal all? personal preference. I mean, this is the same as any other kind of paint in that it's water-based, so mm -hmm. everything will clean up really well. Okay. Yeah, so... Yeah, you can. I very often use the back end of the <laughs> brush handle, um, but right now I'm just going to use my regular old brush. Okay. Um, oh, that goes. So, so that was nicely. just a little squirt. Acrylics are milky when they're wet, but they dry clear. So I'm definitely at full saturation. Mm -hmm. Again, the whole point of this, the thing that makes this system so great, is you get to control the saturation. You get to add as much or as little pigment as you want. It's not a predetermined amount. So if you add just a tiny bit of the pigment and you say have half saturation, does that mean that it's going to dry like kind of transparent or Probably. white? Yeah, or... if it's not fully saturated and it's uh, meant to be an opaque pigment, then yes, it's going to be um, more transparent, but it's also going to be not as high of a chroma as it would be so if it was little... fully saturated. Okay, it'll be yeah, a little It'll be duller. like thinned out, basically. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. So I'm definitely at full saturation with this one here. Yeah, it looks nice. Oh, it's so... Now this, um, the, the binder that you've mixed it with is pretty liquidy. This one is a fluid acrylic we have. Yeah, okay. this one is, um, we have acrylic 60 and we have acrylic 65, which is the thickened version of this. I'm about to show you the thickener. Ah, okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm a, I, I mean, I use my acrylics pretty thinly, but I like to have the, I use heavy body stuff. Yeah, so. you get to control that too. Cool. Yeah, so um, yeah, this one is fluid. This is unthickened. So you can use it as a fluid acrylic and you can also water it way down, you know, okay. as much uh, up to eight times as we said before. Okay, so this is a very heavily used off the sample table thickener number one. <laughs> this is a rheology modifier. Uh, you add like one to max three percent, but um, I kind of do this all by eye. So it's just a little dose. Stir the trick here is you want to stir rapidly in one direction oh. as though you were an electric mixer. So it's kind of like when you're a baker and the more you mix the flour and the liquid, the more the glutens make it all Like stuck. a roux, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that thickens up really fast. Yeah. It continues to thicken for like about 30 seconds. So before you decide to add more, you want to wait because you can yeah. go too far. It can turn into a solid clump on you. That's amazing. That is like a... That's magic, magical. This is still kind of loose, <laughs> so I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna bring it so okay. it's a little bit stiffer. I'm gonna a little dose more. Now, yeah, is this stiff enough for it to hold the shape? It will, shape? it will, wow. once I'm done here. I feel like I always have to add some kind of like, uh, medium, like heavy, I don't know, like structure medium yeah to to do anything like this i have to buy it in like a separate thing this you can no, just this will it just whatever you want <laughs> yep that's gonna wow. the other nice thing about high resin is it's not full with tons of water so it's yeah. going to dry like that it's not gonna amazing shrink. yeah that's the other thing too is and they all operate a little differently because they're all made differently so yeah. i yeah very trial and error okay yeah this is a magic tool i love that i'm gonna show you this is a thickener number two wow. this changes it a little bit the um viscosity and texture of it it makes it a little more sticky like oil paint do you have to is it the same in fact let's have you like actually feel it Ooh, first okay. before i do the second thickener so you feel okay. what it's like oh wow it's very heavy it's heavy body <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now the secondary thickener. Oh, I can already hear it. Yeah, yeah. So it becomes like sticky. Yeah, I, I add like a, what, a high solid gel to my paint to get it to do this. So that now has more of an oil oh, it's paint like honey. texture. Honey, yeah. gives it a honey like. You can actually pull it around and make strings. Oh, if you add water. If you add a little water tar. to yeah, it, yeah, it'll make it like tar gel. Waves. Oh, woo. <laughs> That's fun. That's really fun stuff. I love how much fun you're yeah. having. It's great. <laughs> this is like, it's like going to the science museum yeah. or something. Let's see if I can pull it. Yeah, see, it's like, oh, wow. wow. 
<laughs> and will it hold that little wave too? Well, the thing about the thickener too is it's a it's actually technically a urethane thickener, so it has mm -hmm. that self leveling property. So mm -hmm. it adds a little bit of that self leveling property to oh, the acrylic. Okay. So no, that's okay. gonna that's gonna want to sink a little bit. Okay. But for the most part, when it, that's pretty much going to dry like yeah, that. But a peak is... like that will flop over. No, is it going to have, it's turned into like kind of like oil paint. Will it have that like glossy Super glossy. To it? That's the other thing about high resin. It's yeah. The resin is the glossy thing. So now we're going to get into some metallics. And to do that, I'm going to use the urethane because the urethanes are more clear when they're wet. So we'll see what we're getting. We don't have to wait for it to dry to okay. see the sparkliness. Yeah. Uh, let's see. And again, urethanes are self-leveling. They're not going to hold the brush stroke like that. So again, the binder determines your paint volume. So I'm going to make that much paint. And start with making a straight silver, super shine silver. This is the aluminum concentrate. Mm -hmm. Shake, shake, shake. Always shake your dispersion. Logged. There we go. Wait, so does the super shine silver have to be in the urethane one or can it also no, be? No, it could be in any water based okay. binder. This is another water based concentrate. Okay. Now, it's a good idea to put it into a gloss if you want it to look nice and metallic. Okay. And here's um, you know, a dried Yay. sample. Um, this is actually mixed with the liquid glass pearl, which is another thing I'm going to show you. It's a glass particle pearl. Uh, which makes it even more sparkly. Um, but yeah, so this would be an example of it into a glossy binder. If you put, you can put it into a matte binder, but that's going to make a much more subtle, yeah. soft finish. Yeah. I like, ooh, wow. So yeah, yeah just a, really fast. a little bit. Now, urethanes are very sensitive, so the stirring is forcing air bubbles in there. Mm -hmm. So it's a good idea to like let it sit for a minute to let those air bubbles pop out, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to put it there. Okay. Oh, that's so shiny. So shiny. That's like the shiniest paint I've ever seen. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to add phthalo turquoise in there. Oh, that's going to be really nice. Excellent choice. Thank you. All right. Those are super strong. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Let's see. Oh, Let's that is glorious. Oversaturate it because we can do that. We can oversaturate if we want. Oversaturating doesn't, it's just using more extra. Extra okay. pigment. Um, now, could you say add thickener to that and it, would it affect the gloss of it or anything? It doesn't so much affect the gloss. It can cause cracking. Urethanes, oh, yeah. as I okay. just mentioned, are quite sensitive. Mm -hmm. um, but using a little thickener is a way to stop. You see what the... The metallic how it was floating around a little bit. Mm -hmm. The metal in the metallic um, is kind of heavy and it wants to sort of float. So thickening up a little bit does help that okay. to stop that from happening. But you don't want to thicken it up too much because it will crack. It can crack, yeah. Okay. Oh, that's so nice. That's got just such a great presence to it. Mm. And it seems to make it more opaque. Is that going to dry? The um, Super Shine Silver definitely is no pacifier because of the metal. Okay. You're when right. you thicken it up, yes, that also is going to well, this one make it a little denser, thin more dense. There. You know, that seems almost, or maybe. It could be just how I'm applying yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at it from a particular angle, so it, all the light effects are happening. Yeah. All and right. it has a smell to it too, I'm noticing. It has a little smell, yeah, this one does. Now is that a thing that, would you usually have ventilation with that? I always yes. recommend ventilation okay. in the studio, yeah, okay. totally. Gloves, ventilation, um, if you're using large batches, like we sell buckets of resin, I like to wear a respirator mask. Um, you want to use a dust mask, an N95 if you're working with dry powders. Right. But the dust mask 
mask does not help you in terms of fumes. You need a respirator mask. You, you know, need the one, one of with the, the, one, like the, the spray two, painter. Yes, yeah, those. Yeah, I got yeah. one of those. With yeah. um, organic yeah. vapor is the cartridge you get okay. for that. Yeah. I'm good on the masks, just not good on the gloves. I feel like I can't feel what I'm doing, and I know I'm going to get over that. I know. Well, just yeah. wash your hands immediately if you get stuck. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's uh, stop the video and I'll make room and we'll do a text transparent oxides real quick because they're yes. really cool and it's a way of making a stable copper and gold that's not from bronze powder because uh, bronze tarnishes. Um, so here, it's our urethane 32. This one's crystal clear when it's wet. It looks like what I use to bleach my hair. Kind of. <laughs> Don't put this on your hair. <laughs> This is a transparent oxide called Azo Russet. Super beautiful. Tap, tap, shake, shake. Little drop. Yeah, you really don't Stir put up. much at all. No. Now it really looks like stuff I put in my hair. So this is a very transparent pigment, as you will see here. Yeah, that goes on really uh, like a syrup almost. Yeah. Okay, then... Add a little super shine silver to that. Let's see what we get. Ah. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. these this you can get a whole wide range of um Golds, coppers, here's some dried samples. This one is yeah. as of golden brown. Um, I'm amazed at how different the character gets like when you add the super shine silver to it. Yes. Like, it starts out very, uh, I don't know, like natural chromatic. Then it goes to this, I don't know, it's like a neutral becomes, becomes a me I mean, literally a metal because there's mm -hmm. metal in it. But I think that's really interesting that you can do all the saturation play with it as well as the, the shine yeah yeah uh so that one's azo golden brown this one's yeah. cattail brown so this is what it looks like with just a little pigment in the urethane a little more pigment a uh, little super shine more yeah. super shine more super shine same treatment here i love this as a color that's such I a nice know. color and cattail brown makes a beautiful gold at which as i say that's not going to tarnish on you so when you're nice. using a bronze powder those tarnish and this one's Benzimidazo Brown, which has a real um, reddish mm -hmm. kind of undertone to it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that so one's that's those. Those. I, love. I love those. All right, now let's jump to textures. Textures! textures. There's so many different things you can do to this. Yes. Paint. Okay, so when you're working with dry fillers, and we have a bunch of dry fillers, we have a, a whole variety of different uh, sizes of glass beads. Mm -hmm. We have tire rubber, we have magnum, we have pumice. It's kind of the same treatment for all of them. Um, some of them require dispersed water because it's harder to wet them, like tire rubber that really is water repellent. Mm -hmm. Something like glass beads, you don't really have to add dispersed water. Dispersed water is a surfactant that goes into all paint, actually. It's in our dispersions. It's, um, it's just something that helps wet things out. That's what it does. Okay. So, basically, whenever you want to work with a dry filler, the dry filler is going to determine your paint volume pretty much. Okay. Then I typically add just a teensy bit of water, just enough to like wet it so that it's like wet sand. I usually use the back end of the bucket and I'll just And why do you wet it? This also helps um, you to use less acrylic so this way it's pre-wet. Okay. So if I were using the tire rubber right now, I would also add a little bit of dispersed water because it allows the water to go in more easily okay. and I don't have to use as much. So you don't want to see like any water down at the bottom, but just so that yeah, it looks damp. looks like wet sand. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, now I'm going to use my high resin acrylic. Now, when you're mixing these with paints, one thing that happens to me when I add in different, you know, fun things is the paint dries quicker. Um, does that happen with this? Well, there's more surface area. Yeah, in I mean, these are all water-based paints, so even if it's like this, it's going to start to form a film in about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to say that 
maybe the film will start to form a little quicker when it's a solid texture, but it's actually gonna take longer for it to cure because especially the thicker your application is, the longer it is for all that moisture to yeah. evaporate out. So okay. like a week or so really gotta okay. wait. And they have to be dry days, not like rainy days. Okay. Because if, if you're painting in rainy weather, nothing's drying. Oh, this is for like outside painting? Inside painting too. Okay. Because the outside weather affects the indoors also. Okay, okay. Yeah, Got completely. It. Okay, so now I'm gonna add my acrylic 60, which is high resin. And I'm just gonna add about 20%. Oh, that's not a lot at all. Not a lot, because my, ideally what I'm going for here is to just see the texture when it's dry and not see the plasticiness of the acrylic. And yeah. this, so here's a dried sample of what we're gonna be doing. Oh, wow, and so this is like only 20%? Yes. Wow, it feels as if it's a part of the paint. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's something that happens to me too is I put in too much paint and not into the filler and so then it feels like paint. Yeah, and when you buy those pre-made, you know, glass bead gels and whatnot, it has to be more resin than filler, I think, in order for it to like last in the container. Yeah. You know? Okay, so this looks pretty good to me. Now I'm gonna add, well, I'm gonna add the quinacridone violet 55, which is the color we used here. I love that color. It's so beautiful. <laughs> Ooh, somebody's doing some work. That mixes so smoothly. I'm really impressed with how easy it is to yeah. do any of this. Okay, so, wow. you know, it looks pretty dry. It looks like it's not gonna stick, but it totally is, as you see in that dry yeah, sample yeah. there. That's pretty incredible. Um, and then if I add super shine silver, oh, that's liquid glass pearl. Hey, let's use that. <laughs> this is another really cool thing. Now that's even shinier, right? This is or a different type of, different shine. Type of shine. This okay. is a glass particle. This is more transparent. The super shine is the metallic, so that's very opaque. The liquid glass yeah. pearl is super transparent. Not that you're going to be able to tell that in this situation, because uh, we've got all this texture here. Yeah. In fact, we're not going to be able to really see what's happening until this dries. I'm going to overload it. I would imagine that makes things kind of hard, or you would have to play with these materials for a while to know like how how they're going to dry and affect the rest of your Yeah, painting. yeah. Yeah, because everything always dries different. Yeah. Yeah, that's such a thing with acrylics. I don't know if it's really like that with oils, but it always dries different from the color that you put down. Mm hmm 100%. Okay. Especially ultramarines. That <laughs> I can never get a good ultramarine. Yeah. Wow. I know it. It dries so dark. It's been seven minutes. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we do. Let's see. And I wanted to show you the, so that's how you work with dry fillers. Okay. But I wanted to show you the pre-texturized acrylic we have, the uh, ultralight. So this one looks like marshmallow fluff. Yeah, it looks delicious. This is um, the high resin acrylic, the acrylic 60 mixed with micro glass balloons, mm -hmm. uh, which are these tiny little glass bubbles um, that are very airborne. So we don't sell them as a dry filler because they're just gnarly, uh, mm -hmm. but we make it into a paint in the warehouse. Oh, thank you. That's perfect. A spatula thing. It's a perfect little cake. This really mm -hmm. looks like frosting. Yeah, yeah, yeah I want to eat that. I won't eat it. <laughs> Don't eat it. <laughs> it's how you know that the, the materials are good or that you're talking with the painters. They just want to eat it all. <laughs> this is the material I love to use in my own yeah. paintings. Uh, it's just, it's super fun stuff. So yeah, it's made with micro glass balloons, which are industrially used in boat paint to make um, boats more aerodynamic in the water. And it just makes a great filler to give to bulk up the paint, but also keep it lightweight. So that's yeah. why it's called ultra light. Yeah. So this is much lighter than like a modeling paste because typically they're using calcium carbonate, which is like a heavy chalk. Yeah, my paintings get very heavy when I use modeling paste. Yeah, so this is a good alternative. All that's right. cool that it stays so light. Let's pick a color. Let's see, maybe a nice quinacridone violet. That sounds good. <laughs> tap, tap. Or maybe we should go blue. I already did a violet. Let's go thalo dioxazine. Yeah, thalo. Okay. 
Is this a warm thalo or a cool thalo blue? That was actually mixed a little bit with dioxazine violet, so oh, okay. it's going to be cooler. Oh, yeah, that's nice. We typically only have um, single pigment concentrates, but this one is a mix. Okay, so again, just a little squirt. Also, thalos are super strong. Yeah. So this is pretty thick coming out of the mm -hmm. container as is, but if you want to stiffen it up a little bit with the thickener, you can. And this is the kind of thing that holds too, since it's what you use with your own painting. Yes, yeah. So I, I pipe this out with a pastry bag and it yeah. totally holds its shape. And just a little touch. And this, the, this is coming out very light right now. This Will this darken? Yes. Okay. Yeah. This material um, stays white. It doesn't dry clear oh, okay. like the acrylic because the micro glass balloons are very white, so they'll mm -hmm. pacify it and make it very white. Okay. So yeah, you might need to add a little bit. If I wanted to get this to be like a really dark phthalo, like the color at the top of the <laughs> bottle here, I'd have to add a little bit more pigment. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you see how oh, that wow. just yeah. sort you of just, stays put. And I feel like this would have to cure forever and ever. It does. Again, a thick piece of paint like that, at least a week, maybe two, Man. to fully, like, because yeah. the underneath would still right, be wet. Right, right. It'd be fine on top, but it'd still yeah. be, oh yeah, that's nice. That's like, this is, this is the sweet spot for color. <laughs> oh, that's so good. So this is just the sort of yeah. beginning, you know, there's so <laughs> many things you can do. I feel like I could stay here forever. Thank you for spending so Absolutely. much time with me on this. Let's look at some of these crazy, whoa, yeah. dried samples. This is a, a cool little painting that Noelle did with, yeah. what are all these different things in here, Noelle? Um, that's um, acrylic with super shine silver and a bunch of like mud colors and um, pumice fine and then this is pumice extra fine this has white mica and azomethane i think mm -hmm. this is ultralight 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 with flock silica Ooh. flat that got thickened cool um i think this is more thickened ultralight with flock this is urethane 40. um all kinds yeah. of things <laughs> of the dried tire rubber. Oh, wow. So you can actually feel that. Oh, it does kind of, gotta be careful. It's a little crumbly. We were messing with it. Noelle was peeling it. <laughs> it's like a pancake. You could, that, that's another edible thing. Just pull it right off. And here's a, a pumice. Oh, I like that. That's really nice. And let's see. So sorry, it's been 11 minutes, so you might... Is it, what time is it? It is... I just want to show you the liquid gold. Okay. <laughs> this is um, added to, I think, a phthalo here, but yeah. we have this um, glass particle liquid gold also that just... Uh, the glass like particle is gets it extra shine. It's so pretty. It's, it's like a glitter shine versus a, a, a sheen. Yeah, like, it's just super reflective. Yeah. Oh, it's so nice. It's like stars. Yeah, stars. <laughs> so yeah, the, you know, sky's the limit. You can do whatever you yeah. want. All oh kinds of amazing things. Oh, there's so many cool things. I see how people are totally addicted to coming <laughs> here. Like, <laughs> once Yay. you go once, you can't stop going. People get hooked. Yeah. 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 Cool. I'm gonna pick out some uh, some things while I'm right. here. Well, thanks for coming. Thanks, thanks, thanks for, for asking me. all your questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really appreciate it, and hopefully I'll see you around more. Yes. This is such a lab here. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for cool. shooting, Noel. Yeah. <laughs> thanks.